Hi everyone, Amy here from That Teaching Spark. I'm going to go ahead and go through these Google slide pages pretty fast to show you all of the 65 pages that are included. And then I'm going to come back and show you the pages more slowly so I can explain them. So I created this toolkit to use in Google Drive after I realized there was a need for teachers to have their plans online and for them to be easily shared with their teammates and their administrators. So I just wanted you to know that every single page here can be edited and all the tables and the columns can be resized. You can add and you can delete. So all of that is completely up to you and what you need for your classroom. You can also make a copy of this entire file by just going to um, File, Make a Copy. And then what you'll be able to do is delete any slides you don't actually need for your classroom or duplicate slides if you need more of them. So for example, this right here is a curriculum map. So what I do with this is I type in the weeks for first quarter, and then I type in the different subjects and objectives that we're going to do for each of these um, different subjects here. This can all be edited. You can change anything you need. Um, you can even change the colors of the background if you want to, but all of these can be, you can delete um, to make them bigger or add more to make um, if you need more. So I've got four quarters on there for you, but again, all of this can be changed if you need more or less. Then after that, I have where I start my lesson plans. So you can put your, the date here for the week. You can go ahead and start typing in your plans. Um, you can type in your subject that you need, and then this is an entire week for you. If you need more subjects, you can add an entire column back on. If you need less, you can take those off. So it's fully editable for that. I did four different templates here just for different colors so that you could kind of see a difference with some different flowers going on in the background. I also did it if you needed it to have bigger spaces. So there's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on one, and then Thursday, Friday, and then notes on another. So if you need more room to write, um, I did four of those types as well. So you'll notice different colors here just to give it a little bit of a difference so you don't get, you know, confused. This right here I love because you can add in different lesson ideas and links you see from Pinterest or anywhere. If you want to put those for next year, you can, again, like I said, you can duplicate this page. Um, it's very easy to duplicate. You just go over to the side over here. You're going to right click and you're going to say duplicate slide. And now I've got another one here. So I can add even more links and ideas if I want to. I could even categorize this by month or categorize this by subject and just save a whole bunch of things here. As I do my lesson plans, I can just pull them in. So that's really helpful. This is just a big to-do list for the week. So I've divided it up by um, days, and then you can just type in whatever it is you need to do, like um, call a mom or whatever you need to do. Over here, I've got things that maybe you need to copy, so you can write those things down, remember to do something, organize and plan, and over the weekend or next week, what do you remember, need to remember? I've also made one where you can type in these different subjects headers here. Maybe if you have something different that you want to remember. I have meeting notes. So if you go to a meeting, you can just take your Chromebook with you or your laptop with you and you can type in your meeting notes and be organized for forever. Um, here I've got teacher passwords. So we all have a zillion programs that we use um, in our classrooms and then we have a bunch of passwords and I don't know about you but I forget them all so I have to write them down somewhere so this is a great way to keep track of those I've got a sample schedule in here of what I do in my classroom but this is again totally editable you can completely change this add whatever you want to um, then we've got a classroom checklist so I use this often if I'm doing like field trip things I'll put all my kids names in here and notice there's two different columns because obviously if I made this too long it'd take It'd be gigantic and you wouldn't fit everything on the page. But then you can just put here what it is that you're checking off and then put an X or a check mark or whatever you want to do to show that students turn that in. I have a student transportation list here so you can put your kids in and how they get home every day. We have birthdays that you can type in. 
student tech information so you know they all have different logins for different programs that they use so if you want to keep track of that you can do that medical concerns are added on here so you can put in your kids and definitely put red um, if you have something very serious that you need to keep track of this would be a great thing to print out for your substitute as well so they know this parent contact so if you want to put all of your kids names and the parent phone numbers so that you have that on file when you're at home or when you're at school then there's a communication log for you so this is a great way to keep track of who you talk to and what you said so that you don't ever forget or some schools require teachers to turn in parent communication logs so this is great you can just share this with your administrator like i said again you can just go to file um, make a copy and then delete everything else and just send this page particularly to your administrator um, a professional development log so if you had to keep um, track of your hours or the credits that you're taking for certain classes and maybe what it is you can do that We've got IEPs at a glance, so if you need to keep track of some of your kiddos' IEPs, you can type those in. Alternate student schedules, so kiddos who leave the room to go to intervention or special classes, you can put those in. Again, another thing that's really great to print off for your substitute. Then we have where we're getting into the different subjects, and some of these you might use and some of these you might not use. So like I said, this is a perfect thing for you to be able to delete um, if you don't need them. You can also edit the boxes if you need more boxes or less boxes. So when I do math rotations, I have four groups and I can type in the names here and the names of the kids and it's very easy to change quickly. Um, if I just want it to be small group, what I'm teaching at each spot, I can put that down. This is just a generic small group lesson template, so you can put down the name of your group. Um, you could maybe put down different days what you need to do, different subject things what you need to do, so you have that there. Reading small groups. I love this for reading conferences because I can type in my compliment, my teaching point, and my goal um, for each kid, so I have one page for each kiddo, so you're going to notice there's one that has their reading level that I'm keeping track of for different dates and I have their strengths and weaknesses. There's also one that just has notes if you don't want to keep those um, reading levels. And then I did a different color just to kind of break it up so you can see the difference between kiddos um, just alternating colors. Again, this is one you would need to duplicate. So like I showed you before, right click and then duplicate it. Guided reading lesson plans. Um, writing small groups, so ways to keep track of your lesson ideas and materials or objectives for your unit. The writing process stages, you can keep track of where your kids are in the writing process. Um, this is would be a cool thing to even show up on your projector so kiddos can even see where they're at in the writing process. I've got the same thing for writing conferences, so you can have one page for each kid and you're typing in their um, different conference notes so you can keep track of that. This is just a smaller version of your small groups if you need more than four groups here. I've already got that for you. This one is just a completely blank. You can do whatever you need to for this. Great way to write lesson ideas, different group activities. Um, same thing here. And this is student data, so if I need to put in different data points, I can put in student scores. So if I'm doing an SRI test, for example, I can put in their first data point, their second data point, and their third data point. I can do whatever I need to do for my school. This is student growth data, so we do have to keep track of our math assessments and how students are growing over a period of time. Your DRA scores, so if you're doing um, the DRA test, you can put those in, and again, these are editable, so you can change the year and everything on there. You can change the month that you give the test. You can type in any boxes you need, add more boxes, take them away. Progress monitoring, if you have to progress monitor, maybe for RTI or for different goals that your kiddos have. And then the rest of these are just grade books. So I've already got um, reading, writing, math, science, social studies, word study already there for you. 
But if you need more subjects or something different, you can just type it in here. You can type in your kids' names and their scores. Now, yes, this is small right now, but don't forget you can um, view it larger. And this is great for you if you need to um, show your administrator or anything, your grade book. That's a great way to have that. So that was just an overview, guys, of how you can use this digital planner in your classroom. Again, don't forget, you can manipulate anything you need for this. You can make a copy of it and delete pages or add pages. You could have, there are just so many options that you could do for this. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.